Okay, let's start. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for another of our Atelier Artworks online lectures. Before we begin, I should like to give you some information about the Atelier at Flowerfield, a 5013C not-for-profit organization. Uh, we're currently in our summer two session um, and our fall one session will begin the week of September the 11th. And we'll, the classes will run for four weeks. Um, they are now open for registration on our website, atelierflowerfield.org. We offer a variety of fine art drawing and painting classes in a variety of mediums, both online and in studio. And we also offer our classes in illustration and digital painting as well. We have a variety of paintings for sale on our website. Um, it's currently down at the moment because we are reorganizing, but uh, please keep your eye on that space as we will be putting some new works up soon. Um, we also have a few items for sale in the gallery. Um, we have uh, atelier hats and aprons, if anyone is interested, and we also have a few gift cards. Um, our current exhibition is our annual Masterworks exhibition, which exhibits works by our atelier instructors. Um, and the gallery is open nine to five, Monday through Saturday. So please do come along and, and have a look at the artwork. Tonight, new instructor, Diana O'Brien, is presenting a lecture introducing herself and her work as a muralist and children's book illustrator. Illustrator, We welcome her this evening and hope you enjoy tonight's lecture. If you wish to ask questions, please post them in the chat room. I shall now hand over to Diana. Hi, everyone. I'm going to just share my screen here. Well, thank you very much for asking me to, um, to present here. It's an honor and a privilege and uh, very exciting and I'm, I'm really glad to be a part of the atelier um so yeah i'm an illustrator i'm a muralist a graphic designer and uh, i have my website up here um i'm and i'm going to go through everything that um a lot of the things that i have done in all of these areas focusing mostly on the murals and the illustrate the uh, illustrations um so yeah uh that's that's the agenda Although I may skip over the graphic design just for now, but feel free to ask questions at any point. I'm happy to answer them as we go along. So I figured I would start with just like a, a quick summary of um, uh, what my timeline has sort of looked like. I started in graphic design. Uh, my father passed away about 14 years ago. I, and at that point I took a step away from graphic design and I started painting with an amazing organization called Splashes of Hope. I'm sure a lot of the artists here um, on Long Island are familiar with them and they, they really were, it was a life changing experience to, to paint with them. Um, I did go back to designing after about six years of working with them. And I started my MFA at FIT, I had had two kids, so I, I stopped the MFA for a while. I'm now back completing it. Um, while I was doing that over the last six years or so, I've illustrated about six books with four more in the works for independently published authors. They're still in progress, like I said. And um, yeah, about two years ago, I left design again to freelance. Uh, the flexibility was what was important to me at that point. Um, so I've been focusing on making murals and illustrating the books and finishing my MFA and teaching. And I will be returning to graphic design, um, I think, for a little while, but that is not part of this presentation. So here are my children, this is Brace and Declan. We read books every night. I love children's books. The, this particular book that Grace is holding is uh, by Bob Shea, one of my favorite author illustrators. It's called I Am a Baby and it's just so simple and, and adorable. It's not really my style, but I mean artistic style. That's why I like it so much. So my children also like to create artwork. And so my Grace, uh, Grace is, um, you can see what she thinks about me going to FIT by her drawing on the left there. I was not so surprised when I saw it, but also a little surprised. And then Declan was very proud of his Mr. Potato Head there on the, on the right. He was delighted and so was I. I love children's artwork. Um, yeah, so I graduated Montreal High School. I went to two years of, of advertising design in Nassau Tech. FIT, I got a two year degree in advertising design and graduated in 1999. And then I finished up I, um, in Farmingdale for, in visual communications. And like I mentioned, I'm, I'm due to complete my MFA in illustration in 2024. 
and my my work history is is here. Um, Levitt's Furniture is where I started doing catalog design. Uh, then I was a nanny for a while after 9-11. I got laid off and, you know, that was the thing then. Um, and then I, I worked for Simple Technologies and Motorola uh, Solutions for about eight years, eight or nine years. And then Splashes of Hope, which was, as I said, life-changing. Uh, my portfolio really grew at that point. And then back to senior graphic designer at a few companies and murals and illustration. And here I am. This is a project that I did with um, with FIT. Uh, it was in the it, they were in the windows at, in Herald Square, Macy's, which was incredible. It was a, it was a part, partnership with Bear Bradley. It was super exciting. We got to paint uh, um, on mannequins. My my graduating class of that year, like 2015. So here are my murals. The tools I use, a pad and pencil and my iPad and Procreate, which I'm going to talk about more later. Uh, and I use Benjamin Moore paint. That's what Splashes of Hope uses. They used back then. And I, I learned how to paint large scale uh, murals with, with Benjamin Moore paint or any paint that was really given to us. And then I supplement with other acrylic paint, whatever, whatever I have around. Um, but mostly the house paint is what I have come to love to use. This is just part of a, a presentation that I recently gave to the whole second grade at Wood Park Elementary School in Comac. So they, the, um, the, the second graders commissioned me for their legacy project. And I'll show you what I presented to them to teach them what, you know, I know everybody on this, on this um, webinar obviously knows what a mural is, but I liked how this came out and my audience was very receptive to it. I got to paint on walls. Here's a picture of my first mural in about 1985. I was six, this is not actual footage, but I did draw all over the walls of my bedroom. I convinced my brother to do that as well. We got into major trouble, but look at me today. <laughs> I made a living out of it. My clients at that time were quite angry. Anyway, how to make a mural. So yeah, I get a call or an email and they say, please paint me a mural. I measure, I take pictures. We use our amazing imaginations to come up with what their vision is. And I, I use my imagination to, to really bring it to life. In this case, that's the principal of that school and the, and the president of the PTA. I do sketches and I show my client, I present it to them in the best way possible. And I use ladders and scaffolds they loved this part. I actually used a scissor lift for, for uh, this mural, which was so much fun. That is not actual footage, but this is. And this is a, a 15 foot high by 26 foot wide wall. And I had to do it in um, one weekend. So with a scissor lift. And then I had a couple of days extra to do it, to, to finish it up. So the kids designed it and I, I did it. And this is my family and my brother whose children go to this school. And here's a picture of the final mural. And this was all done with the Benjamin Moore house paint. They donated most of it, which was amazing. Um, and I, as I went along, I painted the children into the, um, into the mural and the teacher and one teacher that came by and she was so, so sweet to me. And so I, I put her in the mural and that's, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun to be able to do that. Um, it's, you know, I really believe that having artistic skill is a, it's a responsibility. You know, I have a res responsibility to use that skill to uplift people. Um, and I, I try to take that seriously. I mean, I do take it seriously. And I did learn that from Splashes of Hope, which I will get into in a second. So here is, uh, I think that my, my biggest project that I've ever done, it's in Southhold on the east end of Long Island. And it's actually shortlisted for the World Illustration Awards this year which is a huge honor. I find out on September 12th if it if it won. Um, so basically it, it was chosen. There's 16, it's up against, well, up against 15 other applicants in, or entries in the mural category, site specific category, I think it's called, uh, from around the world. And that's chosen from about 5,000, I think. So it's it was really exciting to get that news. But I, I painted every inch of this room, the ceiling, the walls, everything. The stone is all my, uh, my painting as well. So my client 
wanted they play Dungeons and Dragons, so she really wanted me to turn her one of her rooms in, a ba in, in her basement into a medieval tavern and make it look like those archways uh, that somebody could walk right through. So I matched the floor and it, I, I kind of thought of the old uh, Looney Tunes, like when they used to paint real quick and then just the roadrunner would run through and then, you know, somebody else would just smash into the wall. Anyway, I had a lot of fun doing it. And I'm super excited about about this. This was a, a once in a lifetime job, and I loved it so much. I did. I made a, a crest for her. I illustrated that family crest based on uh, her family history and uh, things that were important to her. This is a, a a room in her bedroom suite. This isn't one of the finished finished pictures, but I mean in terms of like the the room furniture. But I did the ceiling. I did that all that stonework. The the wood is all faux painted um, and she wanted it to be obviously a castle with stained glass windows that contain symbolism and uh, inspired by Harry Potter where the sky is sort of magical and open up to above you could see um, it's not not the best picture but you get the idea this is her living room not on the on the left is my is where I'm sitting right now actually in my basement studio which I share with my children they as their playroom and their studio uh, and anyway, that painting is up on her wall and the fireplace on the mantle in, in her living room, the same client. And it actually got on the, um, the issue of dance papers in North Fork on my birthday, which is really exciting this year. It was unexpected and lovely. And they did a, a, such a nice article about me. I, I've done murals in doctor's offices. This was a recent one that I, that I did in progress pictures again house paint and ladders and brushes and lots of hard work but you can see my brushes in the foreground and the cans of paint and i love working hard like that it's it's really fun to to just go on you know the biggest wall i can possibly find it's really satisfying this is another client she wanted a modern bohemian look this was very difficult for me very very hard i don't like trying to do the straight lines, but I did it. I had to redo it a few times. Same client. This is also the same client. This is a designed, uh, so I did this digitally and had it printed on wallpaper and installed. So where it all began in terms of my mural making is here. So my father died in 2009 and I was beside myself with grief and um, not so happy in a corporate job. Uh, it was a great job, but uh, you know, everything sort of shifted for me. So um, I came across, I, I found out through, <clears throat> through, through two different sources. <clears throat> I worked with somebody who had volunteered with Splashes of Hope. And then I took an art class at the East End Arts Council, I believe, uh, with somebody who was a volunteer for Splashes of Hope. And so they connected me and I, I was hooked. I, um, I went very far <laughs> with them. I, um, I left, I eventually left, I was volunteering and I, I was traveling around the country. I left my job and I started working with them and it was incredible. Um, this mural in the front is, it's acrylic and house paint and it's for a, a little girl. She's not little anymore. This was, I don't know how many years ago, I guess, whatever, 12. Um, <clears throat> she gave a list of her favorite things and it was my job to Put them all together to design it and then and to paint it and so i did that and you'll see that uh those those apartments in trees that i came up with for this her name was is kinsey i got to meet her and everything um i i have sort of carried that theme since then and i'll show you that'll come up in a little while um anyway she had leukemia and we they delivered this mural to her and to, to brighten up her space while she was recovering or or dealing with the you know the treatments that were that she was getting for the leukemia um and that is their mission to you know to promote healing through art through, through these murals and so i got to go in um all over manhattan so these two pictures on the right are, are two uh i think new york hospital queens one of them at least and we would paint sometimes overnight and create scenes that parents, caregivers, and the medical team would be able to use 
during procedures to distract the children. This was a, a UCP, United Cerebral Palsy. Uh, they, so there is a school, I don't remember where it is. It's local, it's on Long Island. And this is a 24 foot wall. And I remember painting that tree and being on a, a, a scissor lift and I, you know, I don't love heights, you know? So I, I realized that I could in service to other people overcome my fears and, and use my skill for good. And I loved that feeling. And there, this actually, this was incredible because one of the days, one of the final days, that bear on the right holding up, I don't know if it's not a great picture. It's the only picture I have though. Um, there was, a, there was a little girl who loved that bear so much that she said her first word. She, I think she was about five at the time and she had never spoken. And she pointed to the bear and said, bear, you know, it was, it was mind blowing for me. I loved it. These children I met in Give Kids the World Village in Kissimmee, Florida, which is where Make-A-Wish kids go when they wish to go to uh, Disney. And it's an incredible village. We, we painted murals there this little girl her name is kennedy and she had i guess terminal brain cancer um and that was her brother i think his name was travis anyway i painted them into the mural you can see them uh next to the cupcake playing ball that's kennedy and her, and her brother so I, I i i was able to uplift their spirits and interact with them by putting them right on that wall and i'm getting chills even i you know i talk about this, this is a long time ago and i loved it so much this is a hydrotherapy room. Obviously they do terrible, I mean, the, 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 um, the treatments that they do are not, not easy for the kids. And so they needed bright imagery. This is something that is in the Riverhead jail for the visitation room for when families get to see their, uh, their, their kids when they have to, you know, in jail. This is a hospice house a bereavement center for children who have lost a parent or a sibling or somebody close. This is just some more of the work that I did around the country. I'm happy to answer any questions about any of this, but anybody who is so inclined should go to splashesofhope.org. It's an amazing organization. This is another another example of how I took the we would take the the equipment and just kind of make a joke out of it. You know, the duck is interacting with the kid and making hopefully making the, the kid laugh when the, the doctor has to put the little thing in their ear. Some of them don't like that. So that was my mural experience. Again, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, so, yeah, book illustration is something that I have always wanted to do since I was very, very young. I've always loved it so much. I have hundreds of children's books that I started collecting before I had kids. I love children's book illustration. I think I love it because there's an, uh, because of the narrative piece. So the visual narratives are fascinating to me. I love, um, I love everything about it. <clears throat> so my process for illustrating a children's book, I'll go through this. I have it listed here, but I'll go through it. I have a lot of imagery the tools that I use, same thing, a, pa a pad and a um, pencil and iPad and Apple pencil. And I use a program called Procreate and Photoshop and InDesign. Adobe, those are two Adobe products. Uh, so yeah, so he, it starts with a manuscript. So, so the books that I have done so far have been independently published. So in other words, the author commissions me and we enter into a contract very similar to a traditional publisher and, it, and we negotiate the rate and you know all of that in the class that I will be giving um, at the atelier this fall I, I'm going to be going over all of you know this whole process in, in detail and helping people create their own books which is something that I am currently doing which I'll show you in a minute um, yeah uh, it takes it's every author is different and um, it's yeah, it's an interesting process. And I, I love certain things about it. And one of those things is getting to uh, take the vision that somebody has and help them bring it to life using my skill set. It's it's really rewarding for me. 
So this is a doctor that works in uh, somewhere in Philadelphia. She's a, a anesthesiologist and she wrote this book for her son. She also wanted me to be painting. She wanted her and her, her husband and her son there. They are the characters here. So that was an added layer of difficulty because I was doing portraits on every page, excuse me. And that was, that was hard for sure. <clears throat> um, so the way it started is, you know, she hands me the manuscript after we complete the, the, we agree on the contract and I read through the manuscript and then I do thumbnail sketches, which are shown here. Um, uh, and this is what I do. This is what, how I like to do the first stage. I take that manuscript and I throw it into to InDesign, even at this first stage. Not everybody does that, but I do it. Everybody has their own process. I like to do this because it shows uh, it shows me where the text is going to fall, and it gives me an idea of how the narrative will and should flow, and what potential problems there could be, and where the text breaks up. And I feel like this is a very important first step. Um, I have done it. Can the I ask way. a question about that? Uh, yeah. When you get the manuscript, do does the author usually tell you where they want the breaks to be, or is that something you do when you set it out? You kind of decide where the natural breaks occur for an illustration. Both. Uh, yeah. So it's the answer is is both. Um, usually, so every every manuscript that I have gotten, I think, not every, no, actually not everyone. I would say half of them. I they come with uh, illustration recommendations or suggestions, and page break recommendations. Um, and sometimes it works out, and uh, so you know it's fine. And I I I always start with the authors recommendation like i'll break it up and then this way i can show them like well here it's better if we break it up in this part or you know and with these with a lot of these books i worked with uh, an incredible woman angela perino she is the head of honey tomes publishing and so she so these these a lot of these are from her publishing company and so she did a lot of that work so she would do the editing and a part of that process includes like breaking up the text editing the text um and there's a lot that goes into it um yeah, so it's both, but but basically, once you know, when, when once I get those page break suggestions, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't, and the only way to to find a solution is to to lay it out and then find another solution. If that does that answer your question? Yes, yes, it does. Yeah, but I have had times where I, I get the manuscript and I just break up the text. So, I mean, I, in, in terms of, of these authors who have such a, uh, a, a definite vision for what their book should look like, I, I always feel more comfortable with them recommending, you know, telling me exactly what they, what they like, because it'll come to that point anyway, it just saves time. So yeah, there's that. Um, <clears throat> And a lot of times the text will change as it goes along. Uh, so yeah, so this this is the the thumbnail sketch stage. So this is pretty much the the whole book. And um, on on some of these pages, we decided to put a small character um, in the lower left hand corner, which was it was cute. You know, we have the text on one side and then a full page on the other side. And then we would, then I look at the, what I like to do is look at all these thumbnails and then see where do I want a double page spread? You know, cause a lot of times in the beginning I was just making every page double page spread, but that doesn't, it's not really conducive to a good uh, flow of, you know, you don't need that. Like you want a little break, a visual break sometimes depending on what's happening. Um, so something like the, the lower right uh, um, sketch is very complicated. It, it kind of needs the respect of a, a full, you know, double page spread because there was a lot of hospital equipment that I had to draw. So the top left sketch is digital and the rest are traditionally done. I like to start with traditional sketches because it gives me, I get a better sense of space. Um, I don't have, uh, it's not like when I when I start with the iPad, which I have tried, it 
my brain gets a little confused spatially and uh, it doesn't it doesn't come out quite the same at all. So I start with my hand on the paper and I can like feel it and see it. it. It does make a difference for me, but then I very, very quickly go into digital. Once I have that feeling, um, then I, I, I go right into the digital because it depends, it, you know, depending on the, the client, um, the time frame is usually short. So digitally, it, it's, it's uh, a lot more efficient to illustrate um, on, on the iPad. So basically what I do is after, after this, so you can see my note, add parents, you know, that was one of my notes to the author. There's a lot of collaboration. Um, and yeah, so after that stage, I go to the finals. I, I make final artwork. And this is done in Procreate, which is an incredibly powerful art program. It's not the same as painting and drawing traditionally, but it's it comes close. It's I mean, it's not the same. I don't want to say it comes close. It feels really good to do it, but it is not the same. And you'll see the difference. I mean, I can see the difference in what I'm showing you now, my self-published work for other people versus my recent work, which I'm going to get into a few slides from now. So this is just before and after or, you know, sketch to final. And the great thing about, I'll go back one, the great thing about digital is that there were a lot of changes with this, with this client, with this author. And I was able to very easily make most of them because, it, because it's digital and I would do things on different layers and I could just delete and like move, make bigger, make smaller, whatever. So much easier that way. These are the pretty much the final, like where, what it looks like in print. And this is the cover. Here's another, just one spread from another book that I did with the same publisher, Angela, for a different author who was lovely to work with. This is another style. Obviously it's digital. So I did this with another author and um, I'm, wor I'm currently working with her on a series of books. And uh, I asked her if I could share the next character, which is a, a cheetah, but she said no. Stick with Annie and I, that's okay. That one will be out soon though. And this is Annie and her brother who's an elephant. So here's my recent work. So yeah, what I do is um, on nine by 12 paper, I do a tightly rendered drawing. I love to draw. I mean, I love the, I love painting on a large scale, right? But like, this is what I love, you know, just to get in there and like, just draw the heck out of something, you know? I, I love the control that I have, which, you know, <laughs> says a lot about me, but I scan it in at a high, very high resolution. And then I, I throw it into Procreate or Photoshop, but I, I prefer Procreate because the pencil makes me feel like I'm actually do, using watercolors, sort of. But I, I paint, I use a watercolor brush and um, I multiply the, the layers. So I have, I have this, the high res scan. I make that, I turn the layer to, to multiply. And then underneath it, I do a watercolor wash. And I try not to go nuts with color because I easily can in the digital environment because you can have, you have access to any brush, any color. It's hard to not go crazy, but I restrict myself and it comes out good. So this is the, one of the sketches. And then the color underneath with this one, I, you can see a little bit of a difference. Like she's different. The character is different. And I added digitally, I added more pencil marks. I try not to do that. I mean, I want, I always want to do that, but then I, I really have to, that's another area I have to like really pull myself back from because I can tell the difference. Although in this case, I think it worked. This is my neighbor. Hopefully she's not watching. Uh, yeah, these are, uh, these are pictures of my kids. Um, I tend to like to draw animals more than children. So I'm trying to get better at being more comfortable drawing, uh, children, which is important. Also, you know, same, same process. So lavender forest is my 
so, okay, so I'm I am about to finish my final year in the master's of you know fine art degree at FIT, and that that class is a visual thesis class. And so for the visual thesis, I'm going to write and illustrate a book. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Lavender Forest. Um, and if not, it's going to be another book idea. I have several book ideas that I keep in my, I keep in many notebooks, scraps of paper, sometimes my phone. I'm not organized that way, but I know where everything is most of the time. Um, so yeah, this is Lavender Forest. And I came up with this when I was at FIT, starting my master's degree right before I had kids. So that's 2015 to 2017. So it's a three-year program and I did two years. And in and that time, I came up with these characters, this Chickpea the Elephant and Chad the Giraffe, and they live in Lavender Forest. And for some reason, they are very small. They're tiny, but they're, they have apartments in these trees. This is an, another view of their little village. So right now I'm working on expanding this village. Um, I love, I love the illustrations of E. H. Shepherd for Winnie the Pooh. Uh, this is obviously way more rendered and not as elegant as his his uh, incredible pen and ink. And also I love pen and ink, but I like I said the pencil is really is where I am I'm focusing most of my myself on right now. Um, so yeah, this is Lavender Forest. It's just a nice place to be. I try to. Uh, I love, I love, like I sort of said in the beginning, I feel like it's a responsibility to uplift the, the people who look at my artwork. I'm not into, like there's enough darkness in the, like I don't want to add to that, add to the darkness in life with my artwork. <clears throat> I want to counteract it. I want to like shed some light, you know, I feel like it's so important and I really try to do that. So here are some before, I, I, it, before is not really the right way to say it, but these are my pencil sketches they're not sketches they're finished pencils drawings that i've i've scanned in this is before any color correcting or any adding any color and this is after it after i get get done with them and procreate or photoshop or both sometimes i i do photoshop i do procreate then i um i color correct it in photoshop at the end result it, i i use indesign i throw everything in indesign and i lay out the whole book i forgot to mention that before pencils. I love these. I love these. I want to be, I want to live in Lavender Forest. In the finals. The middle one I used for an animation class I had to take last fall. Um, my brain doesn't work like in motion, in terms of motion, but it was, it was an amazing class and I learned a lot and I, I brought that middle one to life. I believe it's on my website. It should be. I put it there. Here's another one, pencil versus the colored uh, version. And you can see that Procreate has this ability to, like one, if, I, if I scan it at super high res, then it holds that quality. It holds that, uh, the, the, the integrity of, that, of the drawing, which I just love. And, and you can see, I can see a big difference in this work from the self-published work that I do, which both are, you know, this I love, this is more me. For some reason, my voice does not come through. Whatever that voice is, I don't even know what that voice is, but it just feels different when I do this first when I'm just on the iPad, which I can function in that world, you know, but, and it and make it look good, but this is different for me. And this is where I'm headed. So this is something, this is part of a larger story that I have been submitting to publishers. I have a relationship with one of them and I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it will, um, when I get the story just right, um, something will happen this year. Chickpea is um, part of our family. <laughs> and this is random, but I am, this is an illustration I did for Conan O'Brien. He doesn't, I don't think he knows about it, but I'm obsessed with him and I, I listen to his podcast and if anybody watching this now or in the future knows Conan O'Brien, please contact me so I can get on his podcast, which I have tried. And I did meet his producer in LA when I was there for a class, um, but nothing has happened yet. So that's a little disappointing. So if anybody has any connection to him, that would be great. 
and here's my contact information. Feel free to reach out. And that's about it. So does anyone have any questions? Um, if you do, you can put them in the chat room. Um, and just so you all know that uh, Diana will be uh, teaching two classes um, in the in our four one session. So um, one of them, she'll be teaching you how to actually create the book itself. Um, and that will be on Mondays from six to nine. And then on Saturdays uh, from 10 to, I think 10, 30 to 130, I believe it is. It's, it's on our website. Um, she will be teaching book illustrations. So the two classes do kind of go hand in hand, I guess. Am I right in thinking that, Diana? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Do you want to say a little bit about that? Just, you know, what sort of thing you're planning on doing? Yeah, sure. I mean, so what I am planning on doing is just a lot of what we're doing here. So what I've shown you here. Um, so... <clears throat> Let me just back up here to my thumbnail sketches. So whoever is taking the class, um, you don't have to have an idea, but it's, I mean, it's helpful if you have any kind of an idea. What I would love to do is help, I'll show, you know, share my process for taking an idea, fleshing it out, writing about it, taking that writing and making it uh, and kind of formatting it in, into something that is a book, you know, it's, it's very straightforward, but it's harder than you think because it, it's, it's, in, it's sort of uh, like, anyway, for me, it's been super helpful to have other people to uh, consulting with me on, on like what would work, what wouldn't work in terms of my lavender forest idea, especially I, 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 I usually, um, I love to bounce ideas off of, of trusted people. They know people that I admire, either their um, their writing skills, their artistic skills, their you know composition skills, anything, uh, because it is it's trickier than it seems to um, to to form a coherent and compelling visual narrative. There's a lot that goes into it, and that's the thing that I love about it. So in this class, I would I, I my goal is to is to kind of you know, find out where people are at with their ideas and what kind of style they like to illustrate in and just guide them in this process, you know, every step of the way. I have materials and resources to share, um, different websites and different, you know, different handouts that help, like simple stuff, but um, super helpful. And just organizing all of that information into a book format, you know? Um, so yeah, and then the, uh, so, with the other stuff, like what I, I believe is important, uh, go back to my recent work. Yeah, well, even, no, I'll go to my recent work. So something I think, this is nothing really whimsical about this, but so the drawing is grounded in reality. Like it's a realistic drawing, but you can tell it's, you know, it's, it's not, nothing too whimsical about it, but this is actually, uh, you know, so this is a, a library, a picture of this person, this character in the book who goes to the library every day to look up ways to complain about people in, you know, her town. So I made the library, I mean, yeah, I made the library have a computer that is for some reason from the 1990s, um, which is funny, you know, it's a slightly, weird like why would a library have that you know and she's very you know she's old she's miserable i made the computer match that so it's in the the details is is kind of what i want to like d really dive into with with other people other artists other people who want to create books um and i i can't wait to share what i know and like and and you know just kind of share knowledge about about that if that makes any sense and like and things like this capturing a mood so so yeah, like it's important, like this is not a happy person and the colors that I chose reflect that, you know, the, the style in which I illustrated it reflects that, but it still shows a solid drawing. And I, I feel strongly that, you know, I mean, there's some great artists who create children's books that just use a computer and they don't ever pick up a pencil or a paintbrush or whatever. There's 
all different, you know, kinds. And that's, it's awesome. But I do feel very strongly that um, for the, for the artist to, you know, the, to have a strong sense of how to draw, you know, you know, the rules to break the rules. So um, to, to do some traditional drawing with just a little addition of whimsy or, you know, something that's uh, something that makes sense in the world that the artist is trying to create. And it's fun. It's so much fun to just go into those worlds with people. Yeah, I mean, this is not, this is a realistic type drawing, but the proportions aren't meant to be totally correct. So there's fun in that. And obviously that tree is a realistic looking tree, but obviously, you know, tiny animals don't live in trees with windows that light up and there's no doors, you know, but it's really fun to add those things into real life items and the material world. So that's, I hope that that explains a little bit about what I hope to do in both classes. You know, they do relate to each other. And I, I hope that, I hope that people sign up because I can't wait. I can't wait to meet everybody and just dive into this stuff. It's my favorite subject in the world. Um, am I right in thinking that people wouldn't necessarily have to have tablets that they can do the, the classes with just pen and paper, you know, pencil and paper? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what I, my goal is to have, uh, they'll have a book dummy or at least the, the start of one. So they'll have the tools to have. Um, so I'll, I'll give out thumbnail, um, like blank thumbnail, like a spread where you can, you can like, there's a few different ways to create a dummy. So I'll, I'm going to teach them how to, um, <clears throat> how to do it on one page and then how to take just regular computer paper, like letter size paper and fold it and in, in a way that you, it becomes a little book, you can make books. So we are, we're actually going to make a, a very simple book. Um, and so that those will be the tools for them to take away and create for the, you know, the rest of their lives <laughs> with a pencil. They don't have to, nobody, you know, no digital it's, it needs to be involved. Thank you. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Give it a minute to see if anyone else wants to ask anything. No one? So I would urge people to check out the uh, website, check out the description. Um, it looks like it will be two very interesting classes. So if anyone's interested, if you have any other questions, you're always welcome to call us at the Atelier um, and we can relay those questions to Diana. And as I say, the fall session starts on September the 11th. So that will be the first day of the uh, book creation class. And then the following Saturday will be the first day of the book illustration class. So um, please do look at the descriptions and uh, hopefully some people will sign up. Um, I think perhaps you've told them all, <laughs> Diana. <laughs> um, so I would like to thank you very much for giving a wonderful lecture, actually. It was very interesting. Um, and uh, just to let everyone know that uh, our next lecture will be um, in September and will be given by Neil Slaughter. And he's going to be talking about Moran and Chase, two 19th century American masters. And then also Liz Fusco will be doing a basic watercolor workshop in September. So please um, do check out our website for details about lectures and other upcoming events. Um, and I, again, to reiterate, you know, the session, full one session starts on September the 11th. So um, please do sign up. Um, if you sign up by tomorrow, you get the old rates. Unfortunately, our prices will be going up, but uh, you have one more day to sign up at the old rate. Um, so again, Diana, I'd like to thank you very much. I really enjoyed this talk and uh, look forward to seeing you again in the fall. Thank you very much. Thanks thank for you very me. much. Good night, everyone. <laughs>